Hey everyone, Jason here. Today I'm working on an iPhone 6 Plus that was sent here because it has no image after a screen replacement. I thought this one might be pretty interesting, so I decided to make a video on it. Fingers crossed this actually works out. So I'm going to show you what the phone looks like here. There we are in the top right hand corner of your screen. It's just an ordinary iPhone 6 Plus with the bottom left screw hole removed. CPU shield removed and some Shrek shit all over it. So this is obviously a prior repair attempt. I would have to go back and look at the notes to see for sure whether or not this was actually sent here as a prior repair attempt. But if I didn't write previous attempt on the ticket, it wasn't made known to me that this was actually a previous attempt. So what I'm looking at here is something that was sent here for no image, but somebody has obviously had their hands in this thing and um, they didn't figure it out. So as much as I hate, uh, hate to do this, I'm gonna connect power to this phone and see if I actually do get an image because um, we need to see if this is no image or no boot or exactly what's going on here. If we get in a little bit closer and, and look at this mess, um, you will see that this is two layers deep Somebody has carved two layers. Um, I'm going to say that this probably just wasn't, it might not have been just some jackass because it doesn't look that bad. It looks like our chestnut IC has been poked around on, possibly reballed as it has little chunks missing out of it. So I'm going to say chestnut's most likely been reballed. Um, so. Any, any other goodies here? We do have long screw damage in this middle hole, but it doesn't look that bad. Although I have gotten trolled by this one before. Let's see if the screw hole's loose. I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure. Let me see if I can get this focused. A little bit of pressure. Let's see if the screw hole moves. I'm going to say it really don't. I'm looking to see if the screw hole moves and has any of the PCB around it lifting up. And it, it, it don't look like it. This has been worked on professionally, right? Right? This has had the display connector replaced, has it not? No, that's going to be original. That, that's not been replaced. What threw me off was the lack of solder here on this ground pad over here. But that, that could be like that from anything. I, I don't think it's like that from being replaced. Um, so, let's see what happens. Does this phone actually boot and not get an image? Does it not boot? Uh, you know, what? what's the deal here? What, what, what's going on? So, I am going to hook this thing up to the DC power supply here. And before I do that, let's go ahead and connect a 6 Plus screen. You know, just in case it just fires up and works. Okay, we're connecting power supply. Yeah, how much do you charge to fix no image after a screen replacement? And a whole bunch of other shit. Somebody's tried really hard to fix this. Okay, I'm holding down power button. We get 130 milliamps. 200 milliamps, 140, 170. This phone is booting. Wait, wait, wait. We stalled at 140. 140, 150, 170, 200. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're good here. This thing is booting. Not as high of current as I would hope to see, but I'm going to say that our chestnut circuit is doing nothing. And my connector's messed up, so every time I twitch, it, it loses it. So let's disconnect our display, display here. I'm going to switch over to ZixW tool. And... Let's see if we can't figure out if anything's missing. All right, let's, uh, the traces under this thing look, look pretty good. Let's pull up long screw damage. Let's just, somebody thought that this was long screw damage to the point that they took it apart and made repairs and it must have worked or they wouldn't coated it in goo, right? Like, who in the hell would put Shrek shit all over this unless they thought that it was actually going to work? So let's get down here into this bottom right screw hole. I also like seeing all this uh, conductive debris everywhere. God. Mm. 
Okay, so I'm going to say inside of our screw here, hole right off the bat here, I believe this one is an I2C line right here. This one over here is either reset, LCM reset, or chestnut power enable. This one right here, uh, we're going to check that to be sure. Uh, and as far as what's going on down there on the next layer, fuck that. Let's let's look at the schematics. Like, why are we in the second layer? I'm like, mm, mm, ah. all right. So yeah, there's our I2C line that I spoke of. This is a 5v7 Sage line. That actually appears as though it could be shorted straight to ground, right? It's not the one. It's not this one here. This is probably another one, another 5v7. No, that's 1v8 SDRAM. Just going by the size, I know it's going to be a lower. The fatter the trace, the lower the voltage the line is. That's not necessarily true. Don't don't listen to that crap. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so this one is 5e7 Sage AVDDN, and my concern here is that that lead that one might be actually shorted to ground. Uh, let's get in here for a little bit closer look here under the microscope, and I'm just gonna get in here and probe it. I'm going to put my black probe on ground, and I'm gonna put my red probe. on that 5v7 line right here. And we're showing 10 million ohms. Let's try another spot here that doesn't... 7 million ohms. Let's get some alcohol on that. I just... What the numbers are showing me on the meter here, I don't entirely agree with. Because it looks shorted, man. But it's not. Track shit. Yes, yeah, the old undisclosed prior repair attempt. Let's do a charge the fix backlight. Yeah, uh huh. Backlight. This came as no image after a screen replacement. Not no image after a screen replacement. Long screw damage repair attempts. Lots of head scratching. You know, none, none of that shit was mentioned. All right, so let's assume that that trace there is okay. Um, so that is a 5v7 line. This one here is a 1v8 line. It is most likely okay. But we get over here, we've got this LCM chestnut power enable line. Let's remember that one. So right now, let's take note of this power enable line. And we're also going to remember very carefully uh, this 5v7 line and possibly yeah, this I2C line. But this, uh, I suppose it could be raised up off the via. Like sometimes I'll run into an issue where uh, this little pad is disconnected from the through-hole via, and it's like sloppy. But when that's the case, you can usually give it a little bit of a push, and you'll you'll see movement. You'll see it squeeze liquid out. Uh, it's not a very good-looking jumper, but it is soldered solid. Okay, so we're going to switch schematics here on ZixW Tool. And we're going to go for... Let's see, which one do we need to remember? I'm just going to put that on. Okay, that's Sage. That's going to be on the back of the board. I would think that without that powered, this thing should still get a damn image on the screen, but, you know, who knows. Um, so let's switch over. Let's look at the full-blown iPhone 6 Plus. Okay. We're going to go over here and we're going to find our enable signal. LCM to chestnut power enable, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, 
so on the PCB, I'm going to go, and this connector looks like shit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I do that right? One, two, three, four. All right, so we're going to check between pin eight, and we're going to check our enable signal down here. And we're getting one ohm across that. So I'm up here on the eighth pin, and I'm over here on the enable signal on the trace itself. And I'm getting one ohm across that, so that is obviously connected. Um, let's consider the idea that this screw hole might be hosed, this bottom left screw hole. Uh, just because it's there in my face, everything under the bottom right screw hole looks okay. But what I run into on this bottom left screw hole is FL202037. That's also power for the display. Sometimes I see that actually disconnected from the pin. So let's see what pin that's going to go to. That's going to be the third pin up. Okay. And we're going to check up here on our third pin. And we get 1 ohm. So that is connected. Don't see any issues there. Okay, we're going to check our 1V8 filter up here. I think this is a little short shit, isn't it? No, it's not the short shit. It's the one right after it. This one. Okay, so here's our 1V8 filter. One ohm across that. Man, for just a minute, this one started giving me that vibe of had the damn underfill carved out from under it. That's a pain in the ass. Okay, let's check. Let's check our I2C lines and make sure that we are getting data down here to the image part of the circuit. And the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to remove these test points let's see if I can do a better job recording a video today so right next to our forehead connector here we've got these couple of test points that are covered off and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna scratch those down that and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check for continuity from our little test point here to the pull-up resistor up here and then I'm gonna check from our little test point here to the pull-up resistor up here and I'm gonna check and make sure that we have continuity there all of this is is going by like I'm not this is not like ground up troubleshooting this is like oh look what they did to this board um, here's what I'm gonna check so the order of troubleshooting will often change depending on what your symptoms are and what you see in front of you uh, so let's grab this top test point here I'm gonna put one probe on it and I want to put my other probe here and we get 25 million ohms am I testing that right Okay, we're at 50 million ohms there. Let's check the other one. And you see, am I in focus? Let's, let's, let's do this in focus, because this might actually help you solve one or two of them. Not all of them, some of them are just, some of them will make you want to throw them and go find them wherever they land and then stomp all over them. That's what some of them will make you want to do. All right, so back up here, we're gonna check this top little test point here. And I'm going to take my other probe and I'm going to put it up here on the pull-up resistor. And we're at 700,000 big ones, folks. So let's go ahead and check this other one. Okay. And if I remember right, that was the bottom side of this one. Which Okay, let's, let's switch. One of my probes here is a little more bent. So I'm going to put the straight one down here. There. And then I'm going to take my bent one. Because we actually... We actually got to get, 
Can I get it on the microscope camera? Okay. So my other one's going to go right here. And it is at 1 ohm. So what we've got here, and what I did, I checked from this test point here to this pull-up resistor up here. So what we wind up with here, I'm going to switch over to the schematics and explain, not the schematic, I'm going to switch to ZXW. Let me hide my nasty burnt bench from you. And here's what we're doing. Um, I have checked for continuity between PP0302. That's a test point for AP to I2C0 underscore SCL. This is an I2C clock line. And the clock line is not getting continuity from this pull-up resistor up here. But it is getting um, it is getting continuity on I2C0 SDA, which is the data line. Uh, we do get continuity to here. So uh, we've got a data line present from here to here. But the clock line that we need for that data line to know what to do is not present. We're not getting continuity between here and here. Um, so let's, uh, let's troubleshoot it. I am going to switch you back over to me because I know everybody's here to see me and, and not any of this. Like, who wants to make money? Money, junk. Um, let's see what we, we can do with this. For now, I'm going to leave the PCB in the phone. And we're going to start tacking some wires onto it. A little bit of tacky. Tack, tack, tackaroo. Uh, is this wire even long enough? I hate to use a big fat wire. Ah, this wire is long enough. Okay, let's get us a jumper. This is vibrator motor wire out of only the finest of vibrators. And we don't want to nick it or damage it. Um, I'm usually just using a tiny little piece of this shit, but this time around I'm going to use a big long piece. Okay. All right, now we got our big ass piece of wire here. Okay, throw my spool over here. I've been on that same spool of wire since the beginning of, uh, since the earth cooled, or thawed. All right, let's see what we can do here. Spin this thing around to where I can get a good look at it. Okay. Keep spinning. Yes, the things we do to get image on the screen on the iPhone 6 Plus. Sometimes I have to wrap my head up in tinfoil and uh, stand on one leg and like chant. And that's the only way to get the image working on these damn things. You add all of that to the possibility that almost every screen that you ordered is bad with the symptom of no image, and it starts to get a little tricky. I like doing things a little more zoomed out when I can, but that's what that looks like. I just, I just tacked a wire onto the end of our I2C um pull up resistor all right so let's rotate this on around a little bit we're going to be routing this wire i believe it's going to stay we're going to keep it inside of the shield provided i actually put the shield back on this whenever i'm done with it this one is also if this was just straight repair i would have already said no um just because it's an iphone 6 plus 
and the odds of this thing being in for a screen replacement due to the screen itself are slim to nothing. This thing most likely came in for repair. Due to touch IC failure. That's most likely why this is in for repair on uh, for a screen replacement to start with. All right, so we're going to leave this a little bit slack because I'm not completely... Shit, you couldn't even see what I'm doing. I'm an asshole. I'm not completely sure where I'm going to route it yet, so we're going to leave this a little slack. Now, also, I, I do want to tell you that this is the second time that I've ran into this situation, uh, which is one of the reasons why I knew to check there first. I check the common things first, and then you slowly start running out of options, and then... And then from there it turns into miserable hell. But uh, we might actually get an image on the screen with this one without it being miserable hell first. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to try to tin my wire and solder this down all in one swing. The wire is thin enough it typically works out okay. We want to burn the enamel off, tin it, and solder it all in one punch. There we go. So that wire is soldered down. There we are. No image after a screen replacement. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Okay. This phone also has data, and I'm hoping that this guy can get his data back. That's my goal. You know, I might, I might talk all pissy about it, but... I'm actually a really happy, jolly person. And my undisclosed prior repair attempts have really thinned out a lot. So... Um, I don't have a whole lot to gripe about, really. Um, so if you're this customer and you're watching this video, there's no hard feelings, man. I'm still going to fix this. All right, so there is us a little bit of a temporary jumper. And all we've done now is we have restored continuity for an I2C clock line that goes from R0302 down to PP0302. And my assumption here is that we do have continuity between PP0302 and D3 on Chestnut. That's an assumption. I don't, I, don't, I don't know that for sure. The last time I ran into this situation, it was golden. It worked. Um, so let's see, uh, let's see if that works this time. Am I still, let's see. I never even took the board out of his housing. Okay. What we are going to do here we're going to slide this phone back up here to where you can see it. We are going to plug a different screen in. Well, you know what? You guys will accuse me of not fixing it. All right, we'll plug the same junk-ass screen into it, but this screen has touch issues. Should have grabbed a different screen, uh, especially considering the fact that this phone was probably worked on originally due to touch IC problems and not the screen. Or searching no service, or who, who wants to place bets? It's an iPhone 6 Plus. Who wants to place bets as to why this thing was open to start with? Uh, because the issue of no image, this, man, nah, I can't say that. The issue of the data line missing, <laughs> the clock line missing, that's going to be long screw damage. But the issue of no image, <sighs> oh, 6 Plus. Anybody else love the iPhone 6 Plus as much as I love the iPhone 6 Plus? I love the iPhone 6 Plus. Fucking phone. All right, so there we go. We've got our DC power supply hooked up of only the finest quality. We're going to push and hold the power button, and we get 130 milliamps. Apple logo. 20, 270 milliamps. We're booting, booting, booting. It's Friday. I'm, I'm in a really good mood. Fridays are normally really good for me, especially after it's been a really, really crazy successful week. I'm to the point now where I'm just about back up, caught up on routine repairs, and the rabbit holes are the ones that are left straggling. I've made a decision to no longer let rabbit holes hold up the line. Uh, it's the only way that I can live my life without, um, uh, without going completely nutty. Now this thing's making me nervous. There we go. We have booted and we have working touch for the time being. It's not completely working because the screen is a heaping pile of garbage. Um, let's go ahead and test this on a on a good screen. Yeah. 
Yep. It's a... Uh, I'm a small town shop. Like, this started... I started this with a hair dryer. I started doing screen replacements and taking local walk-in repairs. That's something that I started doing with a hair dryer. At some point in time, after I started publishing these YouTube videos, um, iFixit, they ran that article about the iPhone 6 Plus Touch IC failure, and um, they mentioned us along with microsoldering.com and iPad Rehab in that article, and um, life hasn't really ever been the same. Since then, like, my view count and stuff uh, is actually beyond that point, but that was like a slingshot out into the world, and now I'm learning how to go from doing a, a, a reasonable amount of repair traffic to dealing with an abundance of it to where if I were to just open the gates and let it all in, I would literally be buried, completely buried in a bunch of garbage. And whenever it comes to these rabbit holes, I hardly ever run into a rabbit hole that has not been pre-fucked with. Everything here that I have s set aside, this stack of baskets here, this is things where it came in for one thing, I opened it, it had some crap going on like this, and I ran a couple of basic checks, and it's like, oh, dude. Because what happens is the variables get to be too high. On a phone that hasn't been screwed with, you've only got typically you know, a given range of variables that you have to deal with to figure out what's wrong with it. But from the point somebody has used hot air over here and ran wires here or there, um, your variables get to be so high where it, it gets to the point where you could easily spend all day long on these three baskets and not make a penny because you held up the line for all of the stuff that hasn't already been screwed with. Everything in those baskets, that's, that's a hogwash. And I am going to come back to it, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm in this position where I'm learning, you know, things are really going good, repairs are going excellent, but I'm learning how to deal with, uh, okay, admittedly, a lot of the stuff that I'm posting on this YouTube channel is botched repair rescues. So I understand why people would want to send me the botched repair rescues. But what I'm trying to say is that our turnaround time is advertising X amount of days for a routine repair. And by the way, I specify business days, weekends are not a business day for me. So we specify these routine repairs. Well, from the point that this thing has been screwed with and had things tried and jumpers put in, that is no longer a routine repair because I'm stuck reverse engineering like what was done to it to troubleshoot an unknown problem. See, it'll come in here with the end problem, no power, but it won't say what happened leading up to that point. So, um, you know, I guess rolling these things, all of these services up into one big bundle, that's kind of where it can suck sometimes because they told me it didn't have any power. You know, nobody's lying. They just didn't tell me everything. So anyways, let's plug the screen into this. And um, yes, yes, busy life here at the STS shop. I will tell you that in the next one to two weeks, I'm not going to tell you exactly when, we are taking a vacation. I'm scooping my family up. And we are getting the hell out of here. We're going to go to the beach. Um, I can't stay as long as I would like to stay, but we're going to make a nice long weekend out of it. As far as shipping and receiving goes, our packages are still going to be received. Shipments are still going to go out. But as far as the device actually getting repaired, there is a small group of days up and coming in the next couple of weeks where we're, ba what, we're basically taking a weekend and we're adding a Friday and a Monday to it. And we're giving us enough time to have a little bit of drive time and, and go chill out and relax on the beach. You know, the last time that I had a vacation, I was in my early 20s. It's been over a decade ago. I haven't gotten a car and taken off and just went somewhere in over a decade. I've been 10 years in the same exact town. So let's see if this will boot on a new screen. Should I hook the battery up? No, let, let's boot this on my power supply. Just just in case it doesn't come up, we have something to go by. Um, so I'm going to take my iPhone 7 probe here and jab it into the iPhone 6 hole. Like that. Because it actually holds a little tighter. Mine are all screwed up. They're, just, they're, they're messed up. I don't know if yours will plug in like that. Mine do. We're holding down the power button and we get 300 milliamps. We get boot with Apple. So let's see if this thing comes all the way up. And then we'll see if we have working touch. And um, I don't know if this customer included a shield or not. I really don't know what all is here. This is one that's been here for a little bit. 
I had looked at it a while back and just thought, mm -mm, mm -mm, no way, not today, because this was a potential rabbit hole where, you know, the iPhone 6 Plus by itself can have any number of issues that can give you enough variables to keep you busy for hours. But once they've had a screw hole ripped off like this, um, trace repair, okay, my, that power supply has got to go. I know I keep saying that, but I promise you, one day it's going to go. I'm, I'm going get, to get, get, get rid of it. Um, so after our little vacation, I'm going to be upgrading some tools. I've decided to hang tight and um, make sure we're going to be golden here for my family and I to have a good time. Everything here at the shop's going well. Um, but I am upgrading my soldering station next. And depending on how things go here on our little vacation, I might actually do soldering station and capture hardware all in one swing. I hope so, because this is just, you know, it's gotten me where I'm at now, but I'm still using USB 2.0, and that's where my microscope feeds. It's getting into this recording setup with USB 2.0 right along with everything else that you see. So um, repairs first, recording gear second. It is all going to be upgraded in due time. Da -da -da -da. So we had a missing I2C line to presumably Chestnut, um, because I bet you before, let's let this finish booting and then I'll, come on, you know you're going to boot, you know you're going to boot, you're not going to have touch IC failure, you're going to get service, you're going to get everything and everything's just going to work. So let's hit cancel, we have touch. Oh, that's right. The volume keys aren't going to work on the lock screen, right? All right. So there you have it. No image. iPhone 6 Plus. This was caused by long screw damage, most likely. And the reason why I say that um, is because the screw hole was tore off the board. <laughs> and um, at some point, this I2C line runs under that screw hole. Now, the direction of it on the the actual ZXW tool long screw chart, um, the direction of it doesn't suggest that it would like run across through here. Chances are as far as the left side backlight driver, this line makes a stop before it ever makes it all the way down here and hits this first. And then somewhere down in here, there's a junction where it hits some other branch. And these two things are on the same branch. So although, I c are on the same network or, you know, I'm, I'm a noob. I don't call this shit the right stuff. Um, so we noticed that we did not have continuity between this test point and this pull-up resistor. I simply added a wire between this pull-up resistor and this test point. And now this phone boots with an image and has working touch. So whether or not this was in the shop for no image, whether or not this was in the shop for something else, is really, really, really difficult for me to know because I don't, I don't have that history. Um, okay. But I do have an assembled screen, an aftermarket screen. And I have a passcode. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Do I want to test all that on this video? No, no. You know what? We're going to go ahead and leave that out of this one because um, if I ran into a bunch of other stuff, this is just this is going to be a showstopper because, like I said, I can't let rabbit holes and really screwed up repairs interfere with the routine traffic because. What that's doing is that's taking people that are just sent here for no backlight where it's an iPhone 6S, you know, they're a fast paced repair shop. They connected a screen to it, blew the backlight filter. The customer is like, what's up? I just brought it in for a cracked screen and now my phone don't work. So they're stuck left sending that off for repair. Well, when it winds up here in my job queue, if I am leaving those people wait and rot, 
due to a phone that already has Shrek shit on it, um, due to something that I may never figure out, I don't think I'm providing a very good service. Um, so by thinking about it this way and looking at it this way, I'm able to lower my turnaround times and I'm gonna toy around with this just a little bit. And my ultimate goal moving forward in the future is that whenever things get sent here for a really straightforward basic repair, it's in and out. And that way I can go back down to telling people three to seven days or three to five days. Right now, we're advertising one to two weeks for phone repair. That's out there. That That's like ridiculous. I cannot believe that some of these people are, are willing to wait two weeks. And when it gets into rabbit hole repairs and stuff that it's just like really screwy, it can easily take longer than that. So um, I really, really, really thank you all for your patience. I've got a, a small handful of you that have just been amazingly patient. Um, and that's that, that's really killer. That that helps me sleep at night and keeps me from being totally miserable because I'm the type of person that uh, I, don't know, I don't like that kind of stuff hanging over my shoulders. So, uh, guys, I'm going to move on here. Uh, let's see. The next thing I'm going to do is clean up all the other flux on this thing. I'm going to clean this up. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm going I'm to put it back together, put the shield back on it. Before I bolt this thing in the housing, I'm gonna to try to check and make sure it doesn't have touch IC failure. I might actually go ahead and pull Mason, add the M1 jumper and put Mason back on it. Otherwise, sure enough, after I get this thing completely reassembled is when it'll have flickering gray bars. So folks, that is gonna be it for this video. I do hope you have successful repairs and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good day.